टॉपिक पैरल एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एसोसिएशन रूल एल्गोरिथम्स एट द एंड ऑफ द सेशन यू एज अ स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू डेमोन्स्ट्रेट द पैरल एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड एसोसिएशन रूल एल्गोरिथम्स या बेसिकली वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट एंड वी ट्राई टू स्ट्राइव टू पैरलाइज डेटा विच इज कॉल्ड एज डेटा पैरलिज्म एंड वी स्ट्राइव टू पैरलाइज द कैंडिडेट्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डेटा which is task parallelism so that there are ty two types of parallelism one is a data parallelism and one is a task parallelism in task parallelism candidates are partitioned and counted separately at each processor the partitioning algorithm would be easy to parallelize using the task parallelism approach data parallelism algorithms have reduced communication cost over the task and only initial candidates and local counts at each iteration must be distributed with the task parallelism not only candidates but local set of transactions must be broadcast to all other sites data parallelism requires the memory at each processor to be large enough to store all candidates at each scan for task parallelism only the subset of candidates that are assigned to a processor during each scan must fit into the memory since partitioning are of different sizes and the task parallelism algorithm can adapt to the amount of memory at each site data parallelism task scale linearly with the number of processors and the database size because we are going to do these tasks on various processors we are reducing the amount of time and the speed of generating our particular rules is going to increase considering reduced memory requirement task parallelism may work well when data parallelism may not work now let us concentrate on data parallelism this is a count distribution algorithm which supports data parallelism data is divided into p partitions like the partitioning algorithm and one for each processor is allocated each processor counts the candidates for its data and then broadcasts its count to all other processors each processor then determines the global counts counts are used to determine large item sets and to generate the candidates for the next scan this is the algorithm in which we take the input as the item sets we go for the pre processors and we go for the database which is divided into partitions we consider p partitions of the particular database and we also input a support for this particular rules and the output is large item sets that we are going to develop the count distribution algorithm first takes into the count in parallel okay performs the in parallel for each of the processor pi and it is used to scan the particular number of the items which are present in each partition then the initial candidates are set to be the items initial counts for each item sets are set to 0 and then we keep on adding the particular candidates to this particular item set and we determine then a count for each of the particular partition and then we go for merging all this to determine a global count this is an illustration of how we do it for a partition p1 p2 and p3 of the part of the database d1 d2 and d3 and then we merge it with the broadcast of these local counts to find the global count finally task parallelism algorithm is called as data distribution algorithm candidates as well as the database are partitioned among the processors each processor in parallel counts the candidates given to it using its local database partition each processor then broadcasts its database partition to all the processors and each processor then uses and calculates the global count for its data and broadcasts the count to all other processors 
Each processor then determines a global large item sets and generates the next candidates. Candidates are then divided among the processors for the next scan. So from lower scans, you are going to get a more precise rules in the upper scans. The algorithm goes like this way. We have item sets, we have the processors, P processors which are defined for the P partitions in our data sets, D1 up to DP and we have a support S and the output is large item sets which have, we have to generate. And as we have understood in this particular algorithm also, we keep on adding to our particular item sets and then finally generate a local count for the particular partition and then we merge these counts to find a global count for our data set and that will tell us about our large item sets. What are the metrics for combining these particular data sets? We have target rules to be generated of all or the subset of all the data. Then we have types of rules to be generated which may be regular or advanced. Then we have the data types where the data is categorical or plain text. Then we have a data source which is presence or absence of a particular data which might also contribute to missing data. We have techniques which are large item sets or the others. We have item strategies which are bottom up or top down. Transaction strategies which are transaction samples, partitioning based counting, item data structures which might be hash tree or others, transaction data structure which might be a flat file or a TID list, transaction ID list, then optimization which might deal with skewness or the main memory, then an architecture which might be sequential, parallel or distributed. Then we have parallelism in our particular strategy which might be data parallelism or task parallelism. These are metrics for combining our particular data to form a large data set. Let us pause and think for a while. What are the difference between the algorithms we have studied so far to generate large data sets? One is based on data, one is based on your parallelism. which is task parallelism. Now comparison of this association rules. We have various association rules, a priori, sampling, partitioning, CDA and DDA. Here we have number of scans in a priori M plus 1 for sampling 2, for partitioning 2, for CDA M plus 1, DDA M plus 1. The data structures are indicated here and we are indicating whether parallelism is used and whether it is a data parallelism or a task parallelism. We may use incremental rules which help us to use the data which is already processed. Static based assumption but it, of course it is not realistic. The condition where underlying database changes are there, where incremental updation approaches can be used for the database where fast update algorithms can be used in the a priori algorithm to get and generate better rules. For our references, we have used. Thank you.